Dobrý večer, vítám vás na diskuzi s Miklošem Peternákem, Atilou Čorgo a Milošem Bojtichovským, které jsme pozvali u příležitosti spuštění nového projektu na Ohradě, na Ohradě muzea umění Olomouc, která zaclání vlastně pro luku, na které by v budoucnosti mělo stát SEFO. Ten projekt Atily Čorgo, který je vlastně od včerejška, od včerejška na Ohradě přítomen, tak je už vlastně třetí projekt z nové série výstav, které jsme zahájili v období lockdownu. První z těch projektů byl, byl projekt skupiny, skupiny Biskum Album Olomouckého kolektivu. Druhý projekt navazoval na festival Akademia Film Olomouc a vlastně ten Atilu projekt je, je třetí z té série nových výstav. Samozřejmě ten ty, ta nová koncepce pro ohradu vznikla, jak jsem říkal, v, v době lockdownu, jako jakási alternativa k výstavám, které byly zrušeny nebo respektive pozastaveny uh, uvnitř institucí. A kromě toho teda, že jsme se rozhodli prezentovat ta díla na ohradě v, jaksi v ploše, tak uh, počínaje tím projektem uh, AFO, který skončil minulý týden, uh, jsme se rozhodli zároveň vstoupit ještě do dalšího rozměru, do virtuálního rozměru a vlastně prezentovat projekty pomocí systému AR, Augmented Reality, rozšířené reality a vlastně i vy, návštěvníci, kolendoucí, si můžete pomocí svého mobilního telefonu s postažení aplikace, návod je vlastně ve výkladci vedle, vedle ohrady, si můžete prohlédnout vlastně další projekty, které ta rozšířená realita skrývá. Já bych se nyní asi, nebo ještě takhle, celý ten projekt ohrady a vlastně těch výstav, které, které jsme zahájili, je součástí součástí přehlídky Trienále, která v Olomouci v podstatě už probíhá od loňského roku, kdy nějaké návazné projekty a výstavy vlastně proběhly už v galerii Cezar a na dalších místech. A ten hlavní program Trienále, SEFO, bude spuštěn 24. června a bude pokračovat až do 2. ledna 2022. Součástí bude série v výstav jak v hlavní budově muzea, tak v dalších galeriích ve městě, ale také vstupů ve veřejném prostoru, série přednášek, debat a dalších doprovodných programů, které se budou následně odehrávat částečně vlastně v, přímo v proluce Sefo za ohradou. Určitě sledujte web, muzea, umění, sociální sítě a tak dále, abyste se dozvěděli o tom projektu více a já myslím, že se můžeme pustit do té dnešní debaty. Já s dovolením teďka přejdu do angličtiny, protože ta dnešní debata bude celá vedena v angličtině. So, I would like to introduce my uh, three guests here, uh, Miklos Paternak, uh, Attila Čorgo and Miloš Wojtichovský. Um, Attila is uh, the artist and the author of the, of the uh, realization for the Ohrada, for the fence wall. And um, the selection of or, or uh, why we chose uh, Miklos and Miloš uh, is actually because Uh, or for me at least, it was uh, the, the main uh, reason uh, to connect these three people uh, because uh, in year 1994, uh, they all met at the uh, Plassi Symposium uh, in monastery, uh, for, for monastery in, in, in Plassi in Western Bohemia, uh, where um, uh, Miloš Wojtichovský uh, organized a, a festival or a symposium of, of metamedia, multimedia art, intermedia art. 
and um, Miklos as a curator theoretician uh, collaborated on uh, um, on uh, presenting uh, Hungarian artists and also Attila Cherga uh, between them. Um, as I found uh, found out uh, a few minutes ago, uh, Attila and Miloš met at a different occasion in in Amsterdam, where where, where they both uh, met in in uh, I believe early nineties or late eighties, and uh, that was for me like the point of departure for this for this uh, connection of these uh, three persons. Uh, I'd like to now uh, make a short introduction about, about uh, all three participants. Attila Ciorgo uh, belongs to a strong generation of Central European artists uh, whose artistic career developed mainly after the fall of the Iron Curtain. His work regularly appears in international exhibitions and in the collections of major foreign institutions. He creates kinetic objects, dynamic installation, and complex instruments in which he freely crosses the thin line between art and science. His primary inter interest remains in the object, its surface, volume, and internal structure, but the way it is researched is deeply analytical and scientific. His work thus combines precise thoughtfulness with playfulness, uh, chance, and also like uh, improvisation. Um, Attila Cerga attend, attended the Academy of Fine Arts in Budapest and studied at the Riks Academy, Academy in Amsterdam. Uh, his work has been exhibited at many museums and galleries around Europe and worldwide, and he represented Hungary at Venice Biennale in 1999 and again in uh, 2017. And he currently uh, lives and works in Warsaw. Uh, Miloš Wojciechowski is a curator and a researcher. He graduated in art history and aesthetics uh, from Charles University, Prague. And since the early 1980s, he has been involved in independent music, visual art, action art, and curatorial work. Uh, first in Amsterdam, uh, where he initiated several art projects and lectured about Eastern European art. Then he moved to Czech, where he founded the Center for Metamedia Plassi at Plassi Monastery. He, initi he initiated the Hermit Foundation and curated a collection of modern and contemporary art at National Gallery Prague. Uh, he lectured on media art, contemporary art, and communication studies at the Faculty of Fine Arts in Brno uh, and uh, further at Center for Audiovisual Studies at uh, FAMO in Prague. Uh, he's one of the initiators of Vašulka Kitchen Center in Brno, and he lives in Prague. Um, Miklos Petrnák is a curator, writer, lecturer, film and video artist. He's head of Intermedia Department at the Hungarian University of Fine Arts and director of C3, Center for Culture and Communication, uh, which started in 1997. Um, Miklos Petrnák studied history and history of art at LT University in Budapest. He received his PhD in new media, art and science, and was a member of the Bela Balash studio uh, and the Indigo group. Uh, he worked at the Hungarian National Gallery and at the Research Institute for Art History of the Hung Hungarian Academy of Sciences. Uh, he has produced several films and videos during the 80s and published widely on contemporary media art and history. He has also organized numerous exhibitions and events. He currently lives in Budapest. Um, so that was pretty challenging. But uh, first, I would like uh, to ask Attila um, uh, to, to present uh, his works and uh, to tell something about the projects that uh, he worked on and um, yeah, his, his artistic career, let's say. Thank you very much, uh, Jakub. Good evening, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Uh, and thank you for the opportunity to have uh, the wall uh, and uh, uh, to participate in, in this evening in this talk. Uh, but you can see uh, in the wall, uh, 
is uh, part of a larger series. Uh, I try to share my, oops, uh, screen. Yeah. And, uh, but uh, while I prepare this, uh, I try to say in general some words. So as uh, you mentioned, uh, I'm very, I'm very, I'm busy. <laughs> uh, I work uh, um, with uh, geometric problems, kinetic problems, optical things, uh, motion, um, uh, transformations, how shapes change and uh, got another uh, set, other uh, arrangement. And uh, I do this with a uh, lot of technical uh, uh, media. Uh, I build structures. Uh, I, prog I, may, I write programs uh, trying to uh, achieve things what I imagine. And uh, yeah, so this uh, wall piece, uh, is uh, belonging this occurrence graph series. Uh, I started in the uh, late 90s uh, and finished a few years ago. Uh, actually, these works uh, are based on uh, such optical phenomena like uh, interference that uh, uh, you see these uh, curvatures, uh, this, uh, mm, white, white uh, curves uh, on this disk. So this is a position when the machine, uh, it's a motor driven uh, uh, construction is switched off. And then we switch on, so it's spinning. Uh, then uh, the interference, uh, the cro crossing of these uh, lines uh, make a regular shape. If you switch it off, then you have this, um, lines uh, not um, very um, regular. They don't remember uh, regular shapes, but uh, if uh, they cooperate, uh, then uh, a regular shape uh, comes into being. So other part of this set uh, series, uh, these lines, you can't predict what will happen if they cooperate. Uh, that was a point. So it has uh, two phases. Uh, the switched on and switched off, and they are uh, very different. Opa. They produce an uh, infinity sign uh, in the middle. Technically, it's because uh, in this uh, part where the disks overlapping each other, the light, uh, there is a lamp behind the, the disk, uh, the light can come through only if two uh, curvatures cross each other. Then in this little hole, the light can come through. But the crossing points uh, are calculated by program I wrote. And uh, therefore this uh, shapes quite precisely uh, appear. But uh, so they look like on the left photo in the exhibition situation, they are open structures. So people can see everything. Uh, Nothing is hidden. It was always important for me to have uh, to make open structures. Uh, but it's a little video. Oh, this is it. Sound. I, I have a triangle, but I want to have a square. So I add a new corner, stretch a bit, and it's ready. So it's a very schematic way uh, how to make uh, from one geometrical shape another one. But uh, if it's more complex, uh, like in the wall, uh, the fence uh, in Olmutz, uh, then it makes uh, additional shapes. Uh, a triangle appears and then quick scrubs or disordered uh, metamorphosis uh, appear and then uh, square and so it's repeated. So it was important that uh, regular shapes are interconnected 
and uh, in between there are irregular shapes. And I use this effect in other works too, uh, but it was somehow always imp important what uh, connects uh, the regularity and uh, how they are regular things are connected uh, through a seemingly irregular uh, path. So the photos in the uh, wall, uh, they are sequences uh, from this uh, piece. So it here, uh, yeah, here there is a little uh, speed difference uh, between the uh, rotating disc, therefore, uh, the crossings uh, change uh, in space, and uh, this film a strong cin cinematographic effect uh, comes into being. But uh, the idea comes uh, from a much earlier work uh, that was the Solid of Revolution. Uh, this is a terminus technicus in geometry books when we rotate something around an axis. Uh, here, two long screws uh, mounted to a motor, rotated, and uh, a virtual cup a glass uh, comes into being. Uh, and people can switch it on and off, and uh, so it's a uh, glass, sw switchable glass, <laughs> appears and disappears. But there is a stripe inside, uh, not inside, uh, but where uh, it's a question. Uh, it's an interference phenomenon. Uh, only appears where the two sticks, two screws uh, optically intersect uh, each other, so cover each other. Because uh, the inside is always bright, outside shadowed. So therefore the, the shadowed side uh, covers the, optically the uh, bright one and a straight line uh, is very visible there. So and, uh, I wanted to do something with this uh, straight black line uh, because on the one hand, it was so, um, so present, so visible. And the other, other hand, it was so, um, you can't grasp it. You, you don't position where it is. It is somewhere in between uh, the, the sticks. So, and uh, following this logic, uh, I uh, uh, arrived to this occurrence graphs, uh, this, uh, this, uh, this uh, rotating disk. So sometimes the um, way of the creation is uh, not, not sometimes, so quite always, <laughs> always. Uh, it's not a straight line. Uh, but with many curvatures and uh, tests and uh, experiments and success and sometimes not. So uh, sometimes I work with very abstract ideas uh, like uh, the, the disc before, but uh, there are works re more related to the everyday uh, situations. Like here in the inner spaces, uh, it's, a one, it's one kilo emmental kind of cheese. And I wanted to find the holes inside and uh, making the whole structure visible. Uh, the whole structure, this is the holes uh, cast uh, with uh, resin. So it's a kind of... Uh, so it makes visible what you can't see because it's inside the cheese, but there are this hole, we you know. Uh, in a certain sense, this is a sculpture of the absence because uh, in the cheese, <laughs> there is no cheese, this is the hole. And another, another uh, larger study uh, dealing with the Mm, platonic solid. Uh, the platonic solids have a mm, special position uh, among the shapes uh, in the geometry because they are regular solids. There are only five uh, and uh, they have a nice uh, historical uh, background uh, coming from the old Greek uh, civilization. And uh, 
there are simple uh, properties uh, that uh, from two, uh, let's say two, two tetrahedra, we can make one cube uh, because they have the uh, same amount of edges. And I tried to make, uh, make uh, these uh, additions uh, uh, by using uh, kinetic uh, tools. And uh, a bit influenced by Buckminster Fuller's uh, uh, structures uh, I met at that time. And this was the first one, platonic love. Uh, you can see that it uh, was realized with uh, very simple tools uh, and a lot of provisional uh, um, technical solutions. But uh, finally, uh, quite precisely, uh, the machine could make this transformation from, from cube to tetrahedra and uh, vice versa. And... Uh, the problem with this works, uh, the maintenance, because they, um, the poor, uh, poor technical uh, solutions are a benefit on the one hand, because they are much more intimate than a high-tech machine. But on the other hand, uh, they need a permanent uh, maintenance. But the cars need maintenance too, but <laughs> they were producing in factories <laughs> or a more complicated one top model where three shapes unite <laughs> making one uh, bigger uh, icosahedron And in a certain sense, it's uh, very related to this occurrence graphs, the disk uh, problems, because here also uh, we can see a very uh, disordered, uh, or here a much more disordered uh, uh, situation. Now, uh, if you switch off the machine, uh, then you don't know, you don't predict it has anything to do with regular shapes. But then uh, this chaotic character will disappear and uh, here uh, icosahedron uh, comes into being and it will go back uh, again to the other regular scene. Uh, and I work a lot with maps. Uh, I like uh, cartography and uh, I have a lot of projects. It's the uh, last one. Uh, it's not finished, it's so, um, work in progress. Here you can see uh, a map uh, from the 19th century uh, made by a German uh, cartographer, August. So it's an August uh, projection. It's a nice map, uh, this cycloid uh, borderline and uh, big um, deformations uh, at the sides. I photographed my studio and uh, put together as a the image as a sphere and uh, made a world map uh, using the August uh, map projection uh, calculations. And uh, you can see on the left uh, side in the, on the top, uh, this uh, blue, uh, blue square. Uh, this is on the ceiling, uh, this tape uh, glued to the ceiling. And, uh, but uh, it's a kind of uh, anamorphic effect that uh, uh, the logic of the calculation arranges it to a um, square uh, from one point of view. But uh, if we change the position, if we, if we change, for example, the beginning of the mapping, like the Greenwich uh, uh, longitude would go away, then it will, like here, it will change uh, 
dramatically, <laughs> let's say, <laughs> another other shape comes into being. The, ori- the, the real shape uh, uh, in the studio, uh, the ceiling looks like this. And uh, yeah, I made a little animation, how it uh, is in changing. So, like, I like these problems. Uh, calculating something, uh, uh, it has a relation to the spatial problems, the mapping. So, um, it's a presentation of the, uh, the space uh, in plane, uh, which is always a problem. Uh, especially if it's spherical, and uh, uh, and then add added the additional effect uh, with this uh, changing uh, square square on or not square depending where it is. Another changing with the square it's uh, squaring the circle. Uh, of course, it's not uh, the it's just a visual uh, solution for the old Greek problem. Uh, I wanted to have a, such a optical, uh, optical um, sculpture uh, where uh, the light coming from above uh, reflected by a spatially curved uh, mirror and then uh, touching uh, circle in the space and then making uh, like a shadow, making a, a square on the floor. And uh, it needed a lot of calculations and a lot of tests and uh, materials. And uh, finally I made this, uh, actually made it, uh, aluminum uh, mirror, chrome plate is sort of very well mirroring. And uh, it could make this, uh, Transformation uh, of the uh, of the uh, of the circle to the a square, uh, but conclusion to this problem, uh, another shape uh, came into being too. This uh, flower-like uh, mm, mirror shape. Uh, it was uh, necessary to have it. Uh, other, it's a consequence uh, of this problem. And uh, so I finally, I wanted to have uh, only two shapes uh, interrelated, uh, but I got an other one, a third one. Uh, it's maybe it, here you can see better that uh, where is the lamp, where is the mirror, where is the just uh, the, the circle. And uh, on the left side, on the, on the right side, uh, this uh, image shows if we intersect the way of the light, then we get uh, this kind of shapes in, in between. So well, once I had a presentation in Germany in uh, Zarbuck and uh, the art school and uh, one professor uh, showed this project, uh, said that uh, 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 this is the squaring the circle is the um, fu- fundamental task of the artist. <laughs> uh, so uh, it was a funny situation and <laughs> it was hu- much more hu- humorous, uh, <laughs> as I say, you know, uh, and the laughing, uh, the laughing uh, happened. But uh, I was very happy uh, about this comment. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, so this is the short presentation of my works. Uh, I uh, tried. This is, um, I have much more works, uh, of course. Uh, I wanted to try uh, to show some different uh, corners <laughs> uh, of this uh, much more complex, uh, like a poly- polyeder, uh, what I make different uh, approaches, but somehow they are uh, connected and uh, basically very similar uh, problems are uh, at the core of them. And, uh, and uh, in, at this uh, last piece, uh, the squaring the circle, uh, so I, I am very happy because uh, one copy of this piece is in 
Paris uh, at the Astroparticle uh, Institute, uh, Institute of Astroparticle and Cosmology. And uh, so scientists see it, physicists and uh, sometimes uh, Nobel Award, <laughs> uh, famous personalities. And uh, it's there as a public space piece. And uh, it was very interesting to have this collaboration with them. Uh, because uh, normally artists are uh, living, moving, showing uh, their their works uh, for other artists. Uh, this is a typical problem. But time to time, uh, such uh, situations can happen uh, when uh, the uh, yeah, some somehow the audience. Uh, is different or more other other doors open. So thank you. Thank you. That was it. Thank you. Uh, I think it's it's actually perfectly illustrates uh, the thin line that uh, the theoreticians uh, often write in connection uh, to your works. The thin line between art and science and that it also uh, transferred to the to the audience actually um, thank you for this for this presentation i would just uh, add one thing that uh, if you are interested you can you can um, find or you can you can watch uh, some of other attila's works uh, via the ar system uh, on the on the wall uh, there are some eight videos that Attila chose for the for the wall. So so uh, yes, you can you can find it there. Mm. Maybe I'll now um, make a little bridge and show uh, show one more work of yours. Uh, if you let me and. Um, uh, this is uh, a work called How to Construct an Orange, um, which was um, prepared or which was shown at least in uh, Plassey in 1994 at the Hermit Symposium, uh, as I said before, organized by Miloš and, and uh, collaborated by Miklos. And uh, this is a piece which is an old granary. And uh, now maybe I would like to, to skip to um, Miloš and Miklos, or, or better to join, join Attila uh, to talk a bit about, uh, about Plassi, about, about their connection there, about um, how it all happened that this sort of island uh, or autonomous island in the 90s appeared in in uh, Czech Republic, and then maybe just to to skip to further topics. But um, let me first maybe ask Miloš to to talk about uh, about the genealogy of of the collaboration of uh, three of you that led to, to uh, showing how to construct an orange. Yeah, thank you. <clears throat> uh, no, I, I, as you mentioned before, I, I met Attila without knowing, knowing it is Attila when uh, I came for some kind of open doors event in the Rijks Academy in Amsterdam. Uh, I was living since uh, 1985 in Amsterdam. And as you know, in Holland, there are many art institutions among other, there are a lot of cheese and art institution and a lot of artists. And one of them is uh, Rijks Academy, which is kind of postgradual, uh, educational institution, probably supported by the state, by the Reichs. And uh, they, they have, and they had, and they have very international uh, program. I mean, that you could uh, apply for <coughs> residency 
there or uh, stipend for maybe one year. Attila, have you? Uh, I, I spent one year, but uh, it can be two years. Uh, yeah, yeah. One or two. Uh, mm -hmm. But okay. not and, more, not more. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then you know, I used, when I had <clears throat> possibility, a free time, you know, I, I went to, to see what the students are doing. And then I saw uh, an installation by Attila, which I think consists of, if I remember well, it was 1993, 90, uh, falling uh, sand and light stream. On, um, and so we started to talk and I, I, I learned that he's from Hungary. So, so he's kind of brother of Czech, Czechoslovakians and uh, and it was 93 and 92, or actually 91, I started to um, plan to organize an event in, uh, in Czechoslovakia. Then uh, I found uh, this kind of empty monastery, Baroque monastery in, in Plassey. And uh, <clears throat> 1994, was actually the third uh, summer symposium, very uh, anarchistic uh, and tur turbulent uh, culture, whatever event, and uh, where <clears throat> Attila came suddenly with a suitcase, and the suitcase he had this installation, he installed it. In the manas, in the in the granary, uh, I think he spent only a few days because he couldn't spend long time, longer time. Some people stay there for two months or three months. Some visitors didn't want to leave, so we had to push them out in the in the winter. And uh, I actually I think now that I'm not sure if I managed to send. Send the installation back to uh, to Attila. But probably I did. Maybe a little bit. You did. Damaged. You did. Yeah. 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 But uh, in a bad shape. condition. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. It's a very fragile work, so it's, uh, mm -hmm. it mm -hmm. happens mm -hmm. all the time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> and the, the the visit and the participation of Attila. Sir Ge was supported by some Hungarian institutions, which probably was the department of the media art on the art academy, which was <clears throat> founded by Miklos. And uh, well, maybe the last sentence would be that, uh, that the, this idea behind this uh, secluded uh, uh, shelter in, in the monastery was that you know if we have to it, it would be good to, to, to connect to, to kind of get rid of the borders and uh, the languages and <clears throat> and uh, political system and to, to, to create something which is uh, kind of anti-border and you know, so it was it was very international. I think most of the people who came there, especially in the uh, first two, three years, you know, they came even without being without being invited, and some of them stayed and did something and helped to organize to the space. And and what it was actually interesting that for almost for twenty years, nobody was interested in this story of Hermit Foundation. And only in the last uh, two, three years, you know, people started to, to ask me about it. And now I'm invited to talk about it even on the Facebook, which is incredible. Yeah, yeah. But uh, back to the simple idea. You know, uh, so so I, it was 
uh, in a time when, in the beginning of the 90s, when at least I and, and probably more people were hoping that we are going into the new epoch where uh, we, will, we will get rid of the all kind of constraining structures and, <clears throat> and control systems and whatever. And the art will become much more important uh, power in, in the society than it was since 1938, you know, so from the beginning of the uh, Second World War. But looking back, uh, it was quite naive and uh, actually it was also only a few years in the beginning of 90s when we have been <clears throat> actually uh, powered by this uh, vision. So I would like to finish with this statement. Okay, thank you, Miloš. Uh, maybe we can uh, we can now uh, move to the to the collaboration of of uh, Miklos because we, we uh, talked about it before uh, that uh, a certain institution from Hungary actually supported Attila to to create a P or to, to go to to Plassey and to create a piece there. Uh, so maybe um, another question concerning the this let's say institutional or or semi-institutional practices in in the 90s in Hungary, uh, what were the activities behind it and uh, how did you actually manage to to cope with artists and and uh, to support them yeah i completely agree with milos uh, um, that uh, the 90s was uh, a bit different than the <clears throat> it decades afterwards but Otherwise, it's normal. All decades are different, and we were lucky to to survive the eighties and uh, be happy with the nineties. And now a little bit sad in the last <laughs> starting decade, not only because of the virus, but there are diverse reasons. Anyway, uh, I have to tell you that. Um, Attila was among those students who were uh, strong enough to force uh, the Hungarian uh, art school at that time, high school, uh, in the name it was university at that time as well, so to force uh, the university uh, to change its old-fashioned style. So there were several uh, students, but uh, uh, 10, 12 uh, were the most active and the most clever and, and in a way, uh, organizer of this uh, small uh, revolution. So this revolt uh, happened uh, uh, from the uh, late uh, 89, early 90, and uh, the result was that uh, uh, after the changement in the high-level politics, when the new government came, uh, the staff, the teachers, decided to 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 really make something and invited new teachers, new professors there, uh, 15 or 16. And uh, I was asked to, to shape or form or animate uh, a new faculty. But uh, that time I called it media. And also my friend, Janos Sugar was uh, also there and uh, and uh, the most talented students from the university joined to the intermedia. 
from different faculties, painting, um, graphic art, and sculpture. And we started to act uh, as if this new faculty uh, really uh, had a mandate to function. However, we did not have it, but uh, the application went to the ministry and they were thinking about and slowly, slowly, the Intermedia at 93 was established as a real curriculum or a real faculty. But uh, during this three year, we were working as if it, uh, uh, however it was normal, uh, was, uh, would be a real faculty and, and uh, uh, at the same time when the uh, official permission arrived, uh, the first diploma exhibition was also organized. And I guess this work uh, by Attila, the uh, uh, orange, pneumatic orange work uh, was uh, part of his diploma work. So presented in the first uh, intermedia diploma exhibition. He made also a photo series and also a nice text uh, besides, but this was part of it and was exhibited in the Academy of Fine Art. So uh, it also meant that uh, we were strong in, in propaganda and activity and also uh, trying to find support for the students to go abroad and uh, invited people from abroad. Uh, practically, it was that period till late 93, early 94, when Hungary was interesting. And a lot of people came without invitation. So, uh, for example, Terry de Duve was there and made a lecture for us for free. And Vudi uh, Vasuka later, and Peter Weibel, and, uh, and so on and so on. Uh, uh, to tell the truth, there was not a big interest because people did not know who are these guys. So it was not full. But uh, those who were uh, brave and careful enough and, or dedicated their own time to these people uh, could learn a lot about it. And that was also the time when new uh, initiatives were uh, grown up or just formed themselves from nothing. Uh, there were such official or unofficial organizations or groups also in Hungary and in the, in the surrounding countries, but also uh, at the Netherlands as well, uh, in Amsterdam, especially, or Rotterdam. Uh, that the V2 started. Uh, and these new art, uh, new institutions or new, new um, groups with artistic interest, they uh, uh, realize that there is a big change nowadays in the uh, uh, level of uh, communication and in the level of uh, of uh, the so-called media tools and more and more change their thinking towards the digital era and the net era uh, forgetting uh, the old phraseology of video and uh, experimentalism uh, that's why it was, from different aspect, very uh, interesting and, and uh, very uh, and, and an area which influenced quite a lot of self, uh, uh, students and artists as well. However, uh, at the end of the nineties. Things were going to change towards uh, a new type of ideology. The so-called creative industry came, and, 
and those who earlier gave support and attention towards such activities so that no it's time to make money so let's forget it uh, anyway the intermedia was definitely mm, behind this cooperation because or uh, uh, illusion was also to create uh, something in the region to, to, to make more connection uh, to, 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 to focus on uh, the middle of Europe and not always to look far to, to, to America or Canada or, or Great Britain or Germany and so on, but to focus on the region. Uh, not too many successful uh, uh, initiatives uh, were made due to the lack of money and so on. There were no Visegrad fund at the beginning, but some uh, were successful. So and not only um, Slovakia and the Czech Republic and, and Poland, but also Croatia and Serbia. Of course, there was the Yugoslav war, uh, which made the situation more dense, it was near the border. So we were focusing also on, on these, uh, uh, these countries and these artists. Uh, but to tell the truth, uh, such uh, initiative uh, uh, was never strong enough for in a long term. But uh, to tell the truth, I am very happy to see again and again in different countries that this idea came, came up and, uh, and uh, uh, give birth to diverse new projects. The Bro Center, for example, in Poland, or your museum, Jakob, uh, also uh, uh, focus on this important topic. So, uh, Maybe such is the Middle European life. That is, there is a kind of sinus uh, uh, line which relates to Attila's uh, topics as well. So, uh, very happy to hear that uh, you made um, Attila philosophical toys to the real astrophysic scientist. Uh, as they were responsible themselves for it in the uh, 1830s, but uh, then gave up this uh, media uh, approach. But no, uh, again, they became uh, interested in these um, artistic issues. So it's nice. And um, uh, I don't know whether I should stop or start to speak about uh, the given title or topic of this meeting, uh, which is related to time. What do you think, Jakub? Um, I think I think you can uh, you can uh, or we can switch to this uh, to this topic. Um, maybe I will just have uh, one or two more questions. Uh, concerning these uh, these uh, points that were uh, somehow uh, disseminated in the Central or uh, former Eastern Europe. Uh, do you think or uh, do you think that there are some that, that could, because of course there are some that survived, that there are some that were limited only to the 90s and then uh, then uh, were for, for certain reasons cancelled. There was also, of course the, the this uh, plus the symposium, there was the trans art communication in, in Nové Zámky in Slovakia. Uh, but for example, then there is the C3 uh, that that continues actually from the 90s on. Uh, first, like, uh, can you tell us also, also a, a bit about, about just, just very briefly about, about C3 and uh, where do you find the, the reason that it uh, can last for so long? And if there are some similar uh, organizations, institutions uh, that you find uh, like important in the region? Well, maybe it exists because we were not brave enough to close it. <laughs> so, uh, Srikup has uh, at least four layers. The initial period um, between uh, 
96 and 99, uh, it was a three year fully financed big project with three different um, tasks. So there was a task for the internet dissemination. There was a task to follow up the sort of center for contemporary art documentation uh, activity. And there was a task, the new C cube task to, to um, create some bridge between um, artistic, scientific uh, uh, activity via the computer. So to test the new tool and uh, act internationally and invite people and produce new works and exhibition. But it was said from the very beginning that it is the three year when it's fully financed and then a new entity, a new foundation uh, can be made in case if these three years were successful. And it happened. Uh, but uh, unfortunately, the wish of the, the Soros Foundation, which was one of the founder, that uh, after they withdraw their support, the local government or the state or some firms will understand the importance of such an institution and, and uh, support it further, which did not happen. But uh, as in the meantime, the law changes, which changed several times, and uh, we initiated a very successful technical project, a free mail service. Uh, which is the first mail service for free in Hungary. Uh, it was bought by the Hungarian Telecom. And uh, those people, three guys practically, who uh, invented or created, uh, were responsible for the further development and support, which gave, uh, how to say, a uh, monthly uh, basic income. But the foundation cannot make business. So we had to create a small firm which does this. And uh, uh, practically, I, I forget to mention that from the, um, the end of 99, from the year 2000, some tasks were over. So the dissemination of the internet project was over, so we were not obliged to make this. It meant that uh, we had to send away people to uh, see if there were more than 40 uh, people at the beginning and during this period. But uh, around the year 2000, most of them had no mm, possibility to stay because there were no money to finance them. And the, the big uh, uh, shock was that the local government, the first district, the castle, hired up the, uh, the, the monthly uh, fee of the building that we used uh, so enormously that at a certain point we were not able to uh, find enough money to pay. Uh, so they did not support us as a cultural institution known internationally, but intended to pull out some money. I remember when two guys from the local government came to see Cube and look around, ah, oh, there are computers, they must be rich. Uh, so uh, that was the problem. So uh, we had to move at 2005 to a place where we were able to pay for the rental fee, but there, but to a place where there were no public uh, spaces. So we lost the gallery, lost the library, lost the auditorium, lost working spaces, only offices was there and some uh, sellers for, for the library, the rest of the library and the archives. For, for the books and some bits of pieces of that. And, uh, uh, you know, we were there till uh, 2017, when we had to move again and uh, 
gave the library to the Ludwig Museum and the doctoral school in a, a small town in the south and the furniture to whom uh, anyway, uh, so it, it made a big, big step to give up this uh, um, situation again due to lack of of support. Only the video archive and the net activity uh, uh, exist. Uh, uh, we are in a nice place again, but only in two rooms. Uh, but no, it's uh, because of the small firm we created uh, and their activity uh, in this level is sustainable. So uh, I have no income since uh, 10 years from that. So I am free to do what I want in this uh, environment. And with this project, uh, there are sometimes one, sometimes two part-time employee uh, who is responsible for two ongoing project. One is a competition for children, the uh, Shape Your World, uh, uh, freestyle computing uh, uh, competition, which happens annually together sometimes with uh, three other European initiatives, uh, Ars Electronica first, and there's German and the Swiss one. And we have an online magazine and the catalog. So we uh, have at C-Cube uh, site, which uh, I, maybe I can, can show if you share my screen. Uh, can you share my screen? You you have you have to share it yourself. Yeah, Please, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, share the screen. Okay, share the screen. Uh, yeah, it's uh, the project we CQ made with together with Milos, but now I show our main page, which uh, is uh, since uh, ninety-seven the same form. And what I intended show to show the catalog where you can find uh, uh, all the uh, videos and uh, and uh, artworks which was related to C Cube, the huge video archive. You can search keywords and types and. Uh, Go on, uh, and it is uh, related to our collection, uh, which uh, is here. Uh, we did several production, art production for exhibitions, and uh, 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 there is an event uh, site. Uh, uh, the easiest way to browse at the C-Cube server is to go through years. And uh, in 97, we made a, a FUSA symposium uh, together with uh, a small exhibition in our gallery where four artists were invited. Attila as well. Uh, it is he. And practically, uh, when we met uh, Milos in Prague, uh, what he organized this uh, with the Goethe Institute, I think it was also related to Flisser. It was not a Flisser conference, but there were people from that uh, Flisserian era, Siegfried Zielinski and other. Do you rem remember, Milos? Uh, I remember. It was, it was called Excavation of the Future. Excavation of the Future. Ex it was an excellent, brilliant meeting with a lot of... Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
it was it was actually <clears throat> initiated not by me but by Yaroslav Angel. But yeah. you were together. Yeah, yeah, we were together. Yeah. Yeah. It was kind of like a, a media archaeology uh, framework. Yeah. yeah. That's but it's enough not... regarding C cube, or you have more questions? <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I just wanted to to continue because the uh, uh, how, how do you say it? Archeo uh, media archaeology. Uh, Media archaeology, yes, uh, it's all common field with Milos. Um, a secret friend of us. Okay, maybe I will have one more question. Uh, whether maybe for, for Milos more, uh, whether uh, Plassi, uh, because it seems now that uh, it all uh, were somehow connected and that, that the network, the, the communication between uh, similar kinds of institution uh, uh, worked somehow during the time. Uh, uh, were there other different institutions also in, uh, in well, uh, first uh, in Central Europe, but also like in Western Europe that you collaborated with and that supported the artists who came to Plassey or uh, was Plus, more of a, as you said, like uh, anarchy, uh, anarchistic, and 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 uh, um, let's say independent event where where. Uh, I was just talking about the first two years, or maybe maybe not actually two years, ninety two, ninety three, and then it became very <clears throat> uh, organized. Not, not really, but uh, it was possible to find support <clears throat> uh, by the uh, little bit like international institution, like European institution, but national institutions as Goethe Institute or British Council or Finnish uh, Embassy or uh, whatever, American Culture Center. And there was important uh, network, <clears throat> which we didn't really talk about before, but was the Soros uh, Open Society. And under the Open Society, this uh, network of Soros Centers for Contemporary Art, uh, which have been in like, Central Europe, like the, the first main uh, uh, alternative culture, uh, structures uh, alternative to the state, let's say, uh, structures. So it was, it, and they have been because of uh, kind of policy of Soros and the director of the cent in network of Soros Centers for Contemporary. It was, they have been forced to collaborate. So if there was a possibility to support somebody from, let's say, Ukraine or Russia or Hungary uh, to come to the other uh, events in, in, the, in the different uh, countries, you know, they usually did support it somehow, not, not probably not very much is a big amount, but they supported the travel and maybe accommodation in, in Prague or whatever. And I think I, I if you if you look on the on the uh, archive uh, the archivist uh, kind of, of the of the center for metamedia on the uh, um, page of uh, Augusto Foundation, there is like one item which covers well, I'm covering like a longer text which I'm trying to recall what was what was the broader network or broader context of of my kind of conceptual way of thinking and even practical way of thinking. So I'd, I think there is not really much. Uh, it's, it's too complicated to, to talk about it now, but uh, I think that after, <clears throat> after 89, there was from both sides, 
of the Iron Curtain, there was a quite a lot of uh, kind of adventurous thinking people and uh, who've been curious about what's what is on the other side. And uh, got a quantity of foreigners were coming to Czechoslovakia in the beginning of the of the 90s it was actually incredible. I think there was maybe 30,000 Americans living only in Prague and they've been a lot of refugees coming from ex Yugoslavia. Uh, so I, I believe that uh, not maybe Czechoslovakia, but definitely Prague or was really international kind of cosmopolitan time a city in this time. Uh, not so cosmopolitan, cosmopolitan as it used to be before the Second World War, but uh, there was definitely a tendency to uh, to fill up fill up the gap uh, or gap of uh, let's say uh, erasing of the Jewish population. Uh, in in the in the pre pre war period. So yeah. Thank you, thank you. Uh, Miklos, you, you wanted to add something? Sorry. Yeah, I want to add something because uh, I guess it's it's time soon to 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 finish because it we can and 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 I I think that I talked. Uh, not too much about uh, Attila and his work, and now I, I uh, want to show you uh, why. Uh, uh, yes, uh, how to share this? Uh, share yes. So what? There was a very nice um, exhibition in, in Budapest uh, not so long ago. And uh, for those who speak English uh, or Hungarian, uh, this online uh, ebook or PDF is accessible at the new Budapest Gallery site. And in this, I think I wrote everything that I, I could about <laughs> Attila's work. And I am very happy with this possibility and with this text. So I, I, I strongly propose this um, uh, 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 exhibition catalog from the new Budapest Gallery to you. And uh, though I verbally was not able to express uh, uh, the time uh, uh, mystery of uh, of um, this long long poster. However, I prepare to it. Uh, I think for everybody is much better uh, to have this book either in ebook form or PDF form, and uh, and uh, read it. So, and thank you. Jakub for the invitation and I'm happy that I was able to, to see uh, Miloš and Attila uh, in a uh, flat but uh, active way. Uh, uh, so this is what I intend to add uh, and I, think I cannot say anything more. Thank you very much, Miklos. I, I think we'll we'll uh, put the the link for the book online on the on the on the website uh, under the uh, information about Attila's uh, piece. Uh, I would also like to to thank to Miloš and and Attila for the for the presentation and and the discussion about the works. And I think uh, we'll have opportunity to meet actually uh, in person, hopefully soon, uh, and hopefully within uh, the project that we are now also collaborating um, on, and that's the New Media Museums uh, that C3 is also a part of, and uh, also the Vro Art Center and and Puff Olomouc and and Slovak National Gallery, and. It's a it's a, a slowly developing project. Um, 
the the responsible person behind it is is Dushan Barok from from Monoscope and uh, we uh, can now share like at least a part of the of the project and that is that we will uh, we will or we are planning a colloquium for uh, for the beginning of 2022 and uh, would like to to invite uh, many different guests from from all different institutions as well as artists and and curators and so on and um, so i believe we'll meet uh, we'll meet there at least uh, we just need some time to organize it uh, and thank you gentlemen it was a pleasure to speak with you and Thanks to all who, who watched and followed us. Good night. Thank Many you. Greetings. Many greetings, Attila. Thank you. See you later. See you later. See you soon, then, uh, as Jakub uh, told. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thanks to Kamel Zajček as well. <laughs> Thanks to Kamel. <laughs> Cheers. Ciao.